Hello everyone. In today's video, we would be discussing about the features of typical cervical vertebra. There are total seven cervical vertebra in the body, out of which C3, C4, C5, and C6 are considered as typical cervical vertebra because they all share common characteristic features. So before we start with the features of typical cervical vertebra, there is one key identification feature for all the cervical vertebras and that key identification feature is the presence of a foramen inside the transverse process. So these are the transverse process of the cervical vertebra and inside the transverse process there is a foramen and this is known as the foramen transversarium. So this is a key identification feature of cervical vertebra, whether it is a typical cervical vertebra or a atypical cervical vertebra. So now we come to our topic that is we discuss the features of typical cervical vertebra. So we divide the features into first part. So this what you see here anteriorly, this entire is the vertebral body. This what you see here is the vertebral foramen. And this entire structure here, from this to this, all these are the vertebral arch, the parts of the vertebral arch. So first, the body of the cervical vertebra. So if you compare the body of a typical cervical vertebra with the bodies of typical thoracic and lumbar, it is smaller in size as compared to thoracic and lumbar vertebra. And this body is wider from side to side. It is broader from side to side than anterior posteriorly. There are four surfaces of the body. This is the anterior surface which faces anteriorly. This is the posterior surface. This is the posterior surface which faces towards the vertebral foramen. And on this surface you can see these small size two or more than two many uh, small sized foramina are present for the basi vertebral veins then uh, this is the superior surface and the characteristic of superior surface is it is concave transversely from side to side there is a concavity on the surface this superior surface has three borders that is the anterior border which is a sloping beveled border the lateral borders that is this border and this border these are the lateral borders and they have upward projecting lips these borders are projected upwards by lips and this on the back side is the posterior border of the superior surface so after the superior surface this here is the inferior surface and this inferior surface is saddle shaped that is from side to side it is convex and anterior posteriorly it is concave it again has three borders that is it has a anterior border this is the anterior border of the inferior surface which is projecting downwards and it covers the intervertebral disc below this is the posterior border and these are the lateral borders of the inferior surface which are sloping and these lateral borders of the inferior surface form synovial joint with the upward projecting lips of lateral border of the superior surface. So this is the body of a typical cervical vertebra with all the surfaces and borders. Next is the vertebral foramen. So in a typical cervical vertebrae, the vertebral foramen is larger in size as compared to the body because the pedicles, these are the pedicles, this and this, these are the pedicles. These are part of the vertebral arch and they are directed backwards and laterally. So as they are directed laterally, they make this foramen larger in size and it is also triangular. If you see the shape of the vertebral foramen in case of a typical cervical vertebrae, it forms a triangle. Now the vertebral arch. So vertebral arch has got different parts. That is, these what you see here, <clears throat> the part that is connecting the body with the vertebral arch 
is known as pedicles so this is pedicle and this is pedicle so the pedicles these are the pedicles these are short and they are directed backwards this is the back side so these are directed backwards and laterally and you see two notches one notch above the pedicle and another notch below the pedicle so the notch above the pedicle this notch is known as superior vertebral notch and this notch is known as inferior vertebral notch from another uh, angle you can see this is the superior vertebral notch and this is the inferior vertebral notch later on these notches form the intervertebral foramen so in case of a typical cervical vertebrae the depth of superior and inferior vertebral notches are equal they are equal in depth next you see here this thin plate of bone this thin plate this long and narrow plate of bone this is known as lamina so lamina is thin it is above thin and if you see the inside it is thick so it is thinner on the outer surface and it is thicker below inside it has upper and lower borders so these are the pedicles and these are the lamina now we'll talk about the processes so there are three processes of cervical vertebrae these what you see here this and below this these are the articular processes this you see here this is the transverse process present on both side and this what you see here last this is the spinous process or the spine so we talked first about the articular process so if you see the articular process there are two articular processes and they are present laterally and at the junction of pedicle and lamina this is pedicle this is lamina this is the junction and on the junction laterally on both sides you see the articular process that is this is the superior articular process and this is the inferior articular process and if you see them as one unit as a single unit they form articular pillar so this is one articular pillar and on the other side you see here this is another articular pillar which is formed by superior articular process and inferior articular process now because these are the articular process so they will have facets so the facet on the superior articular process is known as superior articular facet it is flat it is directed upwards and backwards towards the spinous process another facet you see at the inferior articular process the facet that you see here again these are referred to as inferior articular facets they are directed forwards and downwards next after the articular process is the transverse processes again present on both side they contain the foramen transversarium and there are various parts of the transverse process that is the part of transverse process that attaches it with the body of the vertebrae is known as anterior root of the transverse process next to the anterior root you see here is a tubercle this is known as anterior tubercle the part of transverse process which connects it with the arch or the articular process is known as posterior root in front of the posterior root you see a tubercle this is the posterior tubercle and you see that the anterior tubercle and posterior tubercle they are joined by a bone which is known as costo transverse bar so this anterior root anterior tubercle costo transverse bar and posterior tubercle these four parts out of the five they are referred to as the costal element so these are the various parts of the transverse process last is the spinous process if you see the spine of a typical cervical vertebrae one is that it is short than the thoracic and lumbar spines it is shorter and it is also split into two parts so this type of spine is known as bifid spine because it is not pointed it is split into two and because it is split into two there is a gap in between and this gap is filled by ligamentum nuchi so on this 
gap inside this gap there are many muscles also deep muscles of back of neck and there is a ligament which is known as ligamentum nuchae which is an important ligament of the neck so that's all about features of a typical cervical vertebra thank you so much for watching the video please do like share comment and subscribe the video